What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be a Revit tutorial, but it's going to be, let's say I'm starting a discussion. So I, I'm going to ask uh, to, to give you my point of view, and then I would like to hear uh, what do you think about this topic, and please tell me in the comment section below afterwards what is your opinion on this. So today's video is on the correct approach to working in Revit. And the inspiration for this video have been your comments. Well, some of you have left comments like, this isn't BIM, this is the wrong approach. You don't, you're not supposed to work like that. You're not supposed to do this like that. You're not supposed to model that like that and so on. So I get a lot of these comments where people are criticizing my approach uh, when it comes to working in Revit. And in a lot of cases, I completely understand uh, what their argument is and what they don't like about my approach to working in Revit. Uh, uh, but uh, what my argument in all of those situations is, is not everybody requires uh, your particular approach when it comes to working in Revit and when it comes to working on projects. Uh, so uh, Revit is just a tool. It's a very complicated, very powerful tool, but at the, in, at the end of the day, it's just a tool. The uh, workflow and the approach how you're going to be using this tool is completely up to you, up to the end user. Uh, each individual user, architect, architectural company, structure company, and so on, everybody is going to have their own unique approach. There isn't really a single workflow that uh, that kind of applies in all cases, uh, especially when it comes to BIM or building information modeling. Uh, when it comes to working on smaller scale projects, uh, having a complete BIM or a completely BIM, as a lot of common, uh, a lot of you have been uh, calling it, approach or a project is usually not necessary. Uh, it, usually, it's over modeling. Uh, this is something that you see with a lot of Revit users. They tend to over model things uh, when it's not necessary, uh, just because we uh, we think it's important to kind of model everything so you can schedule everything and you can make all sorts of little details for everything. When uh, in reality, there's not really a requirement for that at the end of the day for your project. So a complete BIM approach uh, is probably only going to be uh, important for some extremely large-scale projects where it's actually uh, uh, financially reasonable for uh, this type of an approach to be utilized because it actually makes sense on those extremely large projects where it would take tons of time to do it manually. Now, when it comes to working on smaller scale projects, usually the companies and the uh, the whoever is the subcontractor is going to have some sort of uh, uh, some, some sort of their own approach to creating things here. They're not really going to bother with uh, all of the all of the material that you have created during your project. So uh, it's really important to understand uh, what is the requirement for each project and to then, uh, let's say, adapt your workflow or approach to that project. So you just meet the requirements. You don't want to go overboard because, well, it's not necessary. You're wasting your time and you can't really... Uh, expect to charge for that uh, which is not necessary for that project at the end of the day. Uh, so uh, that's my uh, viewpoint when it comes to uh, modeling in Revit you, uh, or the correct approach to modeling in Revit. There isn't one. You design it yourself for each individual project. Uh, and something that I tend to do uh, on this channel quite a lot is uh, make projects or workflows that work for students. Uh, they might not be uh, that applicable in real practice, but for students, they're really, really good. Uh, now, the reason why I do this is, well, there are a lot of students watching me, and this is something that, that they enjoy, and I enjoy creating this material. Uh, but the second reason is, uh, when you're working in a school, uh, the environment in school is quite different than the actual job environment. And I think it's really important for us uh, content creators uh, uh, who are creating tutorials and videos and courses on Revit is to uh, create a material that's going to be useful for students at that early age so they don't go off to SketchUp or some uh, simpler uh, software like that. Uh, we can make Revit fun and interesting for them as well. And then when they finally graduate and finish school and start working in the real job environment, they will already have tons of knowledge when it comes to Revit. And then they just have to kind of improve their approach and workflow to the 
kind of the real uh, job market and the uh, real job requirements. Uh, so I think it's really important to create content even that that's not necessarily BIM, uh, but is it can be useful, of course, uh, for either for school, for maybe some smaller, simpler projects, and then that gets you interesting and you learn Revit, and then you can later on start working on larger projects for larger companies. Uh, but anyways, that's just my uh, my viewpoint on this uh, on this topic, and uh, I, I would really like to hear your opinion. Uh, what do you think? Uh, is there a correct workflow uh, to BIM? Are there some, or, or to working in Revit, to be, to be exact? Or uh, are there some things that you're like, this is an absolute must, each project must include this, 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 and this, and please list it out if you have some uh, ideas like that. Or uh, do you agree with me or do you think that each project is kind of individual and you should set up the requirements uh, uh, as you go along. And uh, with some projects that they've seen in practice, uh, there, when it comes to working in Revit or with other BIM software, uh, the, the list of requirements for each uh, project is quite extensive uh, because everything can be under-modeled or over-modeled when it comes to working uh, on uh, in Revit or similar uh, programs. So it's really necessary to very well uh, define that uh, a set of requirements for each project. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. It was more of a rant than a tutorial, but don't worry about it. I'll be back with uh, my regular uh, Revit tutorials uh, in a couple of days. So uh, thank you for watching. As I said, please comment below, uh, tell me what you think, and uh, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.